I hope. Day is full of pumpkins and brown leaves and orange leaves and candied apples and I'm just fantasizing about fall because it's hot as fuck in Los Angeles. Guys, it is it was 122 degrees today when I checked my car. That seems like it should be illegal. It seems like we shouldn't be allowed to procreate anymore if the earth is that warm. Uh, what's up, my little shanksters, my certified shanksters? It is I, Shank, um, coming at you on this fine-ass Wednesday for another episode of Shank. This time, it's a solo episode with your girl, me. Uh, first things first, I want to let you guys know that I will be performing at the Comedy Store this Saturday in the Belly Room at 8.30. Look out for me in the Belly Room this Saturday at 8 30 that's september 10th also kim congdon and i just got back from san diego from mic drop we just did our first live comedy podcast there it went great if you came out to see us thank you so much if you didn't get a chance to come out we will be in new york on october 4th if you're in new york we are doing a live this bitch october 4th at the stand 9 p.m we're, Kim and I are also opening for Joey Diaz October 8th at the Sony Theater in New York. And then we're going to Vegas, baby, for Skank Fest. I'll be in Vegas October 13th through the 17th. And I'll be performing at the Comedy Store October 10th on Ryan Sickler's show. All right, guys, my little shanksters, my little, my little munchkins. Um, let's get into this week's episode. I asked you guys to send questions some of you guys did actually before we do that how can i forget look down at your feet right now are you wearing socks if you're not wearing socks ask yourself why your toes are assets they're a form of currency baby it's 2022 treat your feet right i never wake up and say you know what i had less uh, i wish i had less socks I've never woken up and said that. If anything, I'm always like, fuck, where'd my socks go? Is there a creature that comes out at night and eats our socks while we're sleeping? Because sometimes it fucking feels like it. I'm like, I'm sorry. Did a monster break in and steal one of my socks? I'll put on, I went to wear socks yesterday. I wore one Mr. Rogers sock and one Brady Bunch sock. And you can have that kind of steez too if you head to oyeah.com. That's three O's H Y E A H dot com. Enter discount code Sarah10. Uh, no matter what you're into, there's a sock for you. They have socks for surf, skate, snow, sc- socks for men, women, babies. And by babies, I mean, I think just children. Um, They have slippers. They have whatever you're into. There's a pair of socks for you. Whether you're into aliens or Bigfoot or Dungeons and Dragons, there's a pair of socks for you. They make amazing gifts. Great way to support the podcast. Support the people who support the show. Head over to oyeah.com. That's three O's H Y E A H dot com. Discount code Sarah 10. All right. I got some questions from you guys. First question was, um, if the third date is sex, what do you do on the second date? Okay, here's the thing. You don't have to fuck on the third date necessarily. It depends on what you're looking for. Like, if you want to have sex, then you can technically have sex whenever you want. Um, I think it's good to get to know the person who who's coming inside of you if that's what's happening because it's an intimate act. You know what I mean? Like... I want to know whether or not you're a vegan before I fuck you. I don't want to have weak offspring. I want to know whether or not you're a religious weirdo before you finger me. You know what I mean? Because maybe you're never going to finger me. Maybe we go on a one date and you're so religious that you're waiting to finger someone till marriage. It helps the more you get to know someone because the longer you know someone, the more things uh, are revealed. You know, I dated a vegetarian. He said he was a vegetarian. I made him a grilled cheese. All of a sudden, he's a vegan. It's like, bitch, open with the fact that you're a vegan. Don't surprise me with your veganism. I also dated a vegan that only ate bread. He ate no vegetables. He ate lots of breads and cakes, though. So that was an exciting time. How are you a vegan that doesn't eat vegetables? 
I also dated a man who had not one solid plate. All of his plates were made uh, strictly out of styrofoam, which I don't even think you can make things out of styrofoam anymore. But for some reason, this man had not even a plate from Ikea, not even a plate from Target. He had styrofoam plates. And if you were, if you, um, I had pancakes on them and I went to go cut the pancake and it cut straight into the plate. Okay. These are tales from my dark dating life. I've seen a bunch of shit. And as someone who's seen a bunch of shit, I think the longer you get to know, the longer you get to know someone, the better, you know, you don't want to be surprised that somebody's a devout Christian. You got to tell the person that you're going on dates with. If you're a religious freak, don't surprise them with a pamphlet from your guru. Has that happened to me? Yes. Did I ever recover from it? Fuck no. You know, like, cool that you have a guru doesn't mean I want to read this pamphlet on your guru. Because I hear guru, I hear cult. Sounds like a cult. Sorry. Um, Yeah. So don't surprise the person you're dating with any weird things. Get to know the person before you fuck them. If you just want to have sex and you don't care, then then I guess it doesn't really matter. But if you're looking for a more uh, serious thing or... A partner or a relationship that you want to try to grow into something then I recommend being as honest as possible about yourself right off the bat like if you're someone who doesn't want to get married and you never want to have kids and the, the person that you're on a date with wants those things then that should you should relay that information sooner rather than later you know what I mean don't string them along and then be like, yeah, I changed my mind. Or actually, I never told you this. I have a vasectomy. It's like, no, you can't do that. You have to be upfront with what your wants are and who you are. Because there's nothing more frustrating than finding out. Like for me, I would need to know if the man I was dating was a hypnotist. Or if he had his Reiki license. Like if he had his Reiki license, I hate to say it, that would be a turn on. I'd be like, yes, he can heal me, then we can fuck. You know, but for some people, a man with a Reiki license is a fucking red flag. For me, uh, a man who has truck nuts on his car is a red flag. A man who has his tongue pierced is a red flag. A green flag. A man who has a job. A man who lives without a roommate. A man who's Living space is generally clean. Like, yes, you have messy days, sure, life gets chaotic, but you got to have these basic things. And if you don't have these basic things figured out, then you're probably not even ready for a relationship. Am I a relationship guru? Here, have a pamphlet. I become a cult leader. (laughs) Okay, so I also wrote down some things that I want to talk to you guys about first things first um oh someone says when is it okay for someone that you're in a relationship with to fart in public okay well i'd like to say like farts happen you know we hate to admit it we hate that we're all human and sometimes we fart but for me as long as you're not intentionally farting like if a fart sneaks out and we're in a movie theater would I love it no but at least it's dark and no one can identify where the fart has come from you know but if you fart at my family's dinner that would be that'd be rough I don't know if I'd be able to forgive that no I mean I think obviously you want to have good manners until you get to know somebody I don't think you should I'm not like a burper or farter like there's some bitches that are just out here burping into microphones you see them or burping I'm like I'm not a burper I'll excuse myself before I start burping on a podcast you know Check out my OnlyFans where I, where I burp for cash. I'm just kidding. Um, I smoked so much weed the other day. I tried to convince myself that if I smoked weed, that my peanut butter protein bar would somehow transform into a Reese's peanut butter cup. And unfortunately, that's just not how it works, guys. It just tasted like chalky. Every time I eat a protein bar, I think it's going to be something that it's not. I'm like, maybe I just haven't found the right bar yet. It's like, no, 
And they're getting extravagant with these fucking protein bars. I had been into one. It was supposed to taste like birthday cake. It's like, excuse me, just be what you are. Be a protein bar. I don't need my protein bar tasting like a depressed birthday. Just reminds me of my worst birthday. My worst birthday was when I was five. Um, an Easter bunny came over because I was born on Easter. My birthday's in spring. So this lady that was dressed up in an Easter bunny costume came over. My cousin unzipped the Easter bunny from the back and it was a naked lady underneath the bunny suit and she was screaming, help me, help me, help me, stop, stop. And I'll never forget that. That same cousin also locked me in a bathroom and she told me what sex was. She said sex is when a woman lies down naked on a bed and a man plays the piano for her. So you can imagine how confused I was when I really found out what sex was because I was I thought it was musically related. You know, I'm like, oh, when I see when (laughs) for like months after I saw um, after my cousins, (laughs) after my cousin told me this and I'd see a piano, I'd be like, somebody's having sex. Um, I was having a bad night because I pulled a tarot card that was upside down. Anyone who knows anything vaguely about tarot cards know that like an upside down one is not a good vibe. For the most part, it's scary. And there's tarot cards out there that are scary as fuck. Sometimes I'll pull a tarot card because I live in L.A. And that's part of my duty as an L.A. citizen. I'm like, oh, yeah, I live in Los Angeles. Yes, I fuck with the tarot. Yes, I have sage. I'm sorry. What's that? A crystal just fell out of my pussy. Not really, but if a crystal fell out of my pussy, um, that would be fun for OnlyFans. I'm not on OnlyFans, but I am on Patreon. So if you want to go see behind the scenes footage of Kim Congdon and I at uh, this bitch in San Diego of our road trip and of our night before and after the podcast, head to my Patreon at just $5 a month. You get uh, a live stream with me. That li- the first one of those is happening September 15th at 8 p.m. So if you're in the area and you want to see me, your girl, do a live stream for 30 minutes with all the certified shanksters, head over to patreon.com for just $5. You get behind the scenes footage of this bitch podcast. Plus you get to see this bitch podcast live earlier than everybody else. So it's a pretty cool deal. You also get photos and videos that are not on uh my social media it's all ad free and yeah i'm just gonna be uploading behind the scenes of everything we have coming up onto there so i'll be in texas not till january but i will be in texas we're gonna do this bitch live at vulcan gas co kim congdon and i believe that's january 7th and then we're also going to be in New York. So you'll see behind the scenes footage of us opening for Joey on the Patreon. You'll see behind the scenes footage of us at Skankfest on the Patreon. Um, yeah, someone said, what's my craziest memory from the last five years? And I would have to say without a doubt Skankfest last year. Because it was my first time going out like actually going out and seeing so many of my friends since the pandemic and everyone was finally in one place that's why I got fucked up and got an 818 tattoo because I was like it doesn't matter everything's temporary which now skiing fest is coming back up and I promised myself I would cover the 818 before the next skank fest and you know what i got it done so that feels good i spent the weekend and by weekend i mean i spent sunday and monday in san francisco flew into san francisco um at this on this like really cool flight it was like a pro- it wasn't private but it was a smaller chartered plane and it was awesome it was way cool it was so much better than having to go through tsa and deal with all of that but it was amazing And so I fly in on Sunday, was supposed to fly home on Monday, lose my driver's license between Sunday and Monday, and had to drive back from San Francisco to Los Angeles on Labor Day. So spent all of yesterday in a car 
it was a wild experience. Um, yeah, let's see what else we have here. We talked about the vegan that didn't eat veggies. Um, okay, listen to this shit. I guess uh, people were leaving Burning Man and they had to sit in 10 hours of traffic. Because everyone was leaving. It was like a mass exodus of people leaving Burning Man. First of all, disgusting. How hot is it at Burning Man? It's a bunch of like people who haven't showered in weeks. People in goggles. People in costumes. People like with LED lights clipped to their shoes and weird furs and bikinis. Like the whole Burning Man thing already stresses me out it's like maybe if I was 18 I would toy with the idea of going to Burning Man maybe if I looked good in goggles I would toy with the idea of going to Burning Man maybe if I had no life and I could just get rid of all my responsibilities to do drugs in the desert I would go to Burning Man but a bitch has to work So imagine you just spend a week in Burning Man and then you're stuck in 10 hours of traffic leaving in the hot desert. And you're probably sick of your camp by now. I don't know how Burning Man works, but after a week of uh, bartering with people and dancing with them, you're probably ready to be alone. You guys know that I'm an extroverted introvert, so... The thought of going to Burning Man to me personally is a goddamn nightmare. Would rather, straight up would rather go to the DMV than Burning Man. And then come home, smoke a joint, take a shower. Because if there's one thing I need, it's a shower. I can't be in the desert showering in an RV. It's not my vibe. Um, I feel like if you go to Burning Man more than 10 times, there's something officially wrong with you. If you're an adult man or woman that uses your one, your one vacation a year to go to Burning Man, ask yourself what the fuck you're doing. Do you know what I mean? I'm still, I'm still tired from Coachella 2008, sweetie. You'll never catch me at Burning Man. Wait, I'll watch. I'll be there next year. I'll be like, my camp's called the Barbies. I don't know. I feel like that might be a bad name. I just thought of it right off the dome. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Jerry Seinfeld did a ad for Kith, which is a, it's like a trendy clothing line based in Los Angeles. I believe it's based on, in Los Angeles. There's a store in LA on Sunset. I've passed by it. Uh, the name's horrible, Kith, but Jerry Seinfeld did an ad for them, and they dressed up Jerry Seinfeld as a hype beast, and it is one of the more disturbing things I've ever seen. I love Jerry. I loved Seinfeld. I just don't want to see Jerry dressed as a hype beast. It's like a weird look for me. It's It feels like nails on a chalkboard. It's like, wait, What? Jerry Seinfeld dressed up as a hype beast. I'm sorry, what? What's next? He's in a Supreme hoodie? I don't understand it. Hate to hate on one of the greats, but it's like, dude. (sighs) I wonder how much they paid him. I'm like talking shit, but here's the deal. If I was 50, 60... I was in my 60s. I think Jerry's probably in his 60s. If I was in my 60s and some company is like, we need you to dress like a hype beast, I would be like, how much? If the price was right, maybe I'd do it. But it was very startling to see Jerry Seinfeld dressed as a hype beast. I'll say that. Um, Okay, now I have some questions from this game called Deep. It's a fun game. Um, Very thought-provoking questions. We'll get into them right now. Is it better or worse if your partner cheated with someone of a different gender than you? Fuck. I don't know. Part of me says it's better because it's like, okay, you wanted a dick. I didn't have that. So no hard feelings. It's not like you went and got a new pussy. I think I might be more upset if they went out and got pussy but it would be a head fuck if they fucked a man if it was a man and he fucked a man that would be very confusing for me because then I'd always be on guard I'd be like now I gotta look out for men and women you know how exhausting of a job that would be (sighs) I'd be like why don't you go explore your sexuality and 
come back if you decide you want this pussy. Until then, enjoy sucking dick, honey. Um, is it unacceptable or acceptable to wait until you're married to reveal to your partner that you slept with a lot of people in college? Like, a lot. I think... It depends on if your partner asks. If your partner asks you what were you like in college, there's an opportunity to low-key imply that you may or may not have been a whore. Men and women can both be whores, by the way. You know? It's like, and what's a lot? I guess a lot is a relative term. Like, it's all subjective. A lot to someone might be 10. A lot to another person might be 200. So, I don't know. I think it's always good to be as honest as you can with the person that you're dating. I think it's kind of fucked to wait until you're married to someone to be like, by the way... I have um, something to tell you. I had multiple orgies the entire time I was in college. For years and years and years and years. This dick has seen a lot of holes. Like if someone hit me with that after I was already legally bound to them. I would be like maybe you should let me know this before. Before I signed the prenup. Before I agreed to have your child. I want to know that that dick's been in a lot of holes. That's just me. I don't think there's a wrong or a right, really, in this situation. Is omitting something technically lying? It depends on what you're omitting. Like, if you tell somebody, if somebody asks you what you did that day and you saw your ex boyfriend and you got coffee with him, not telling that person that you did that and, and you're dating the person, obviously, this would be. In a dating situation so if you went to go have coffee with your ex and you didn't tell your current partner about it I think that would technically be lying in my opinion because it's always better to tell everything up front than to have some weird lie come out later on like retroactively because then it seems like you're hiding something like if you went to go have coffee with an ex who was just a friend and you were honest about that and your partner said okay cool Thanks for telling me. That's one thing. It's also another thing to be like, have your partner ask you what you did that day. You'd be like, uh, I went grocery shopping and I filed my taxes. And then later they found out you were at the Chateau Marmont with your ex having a bottle of wine. That might be a problem. Okay. Some technology experts have suggested that humans develop a universal kill switch for all robots slash AI that would allow us to turn them off if we start to lose control of them. Do you think it's likely that robots slash AI figure out how to override any universal kill switch we develop? Fuck, yes. Because everyone says that AI is eventually going to surpass human intelligence right and once the ai becomes conscious don't you think they would be aware of the fact that um there's a universal kill switch i don't know i don't really understand what's happening with the ai vibes i'm just a valley girl connecting with the shanksters you know what i mean um okay here this is this is fucked um, you find out about the affair on your friend's wedding day two hours before the wedding ceremony is supposed to begin. Should you tell your friend that their soon-to-be spouse is being unfaithful? Yes. If it's actually your friend, yes. Be like, hey, I know that <laughs> you reserved the venue, but the guy you're going to marry, I don't know, let's give him a name, Clark... Clark's been sticking his dick and everyone from here to there, from Rhode Island to New Hampshire. I don't know what the distance from Rhode Island to New Hampshire is, but here is a better example. From Rhode Island to Alaska, I'd, I'd want to know. Like, how fucked would it be the, if your friend is giving this person the rest of their life? I think they deserve to know no matter what, if the person is cheating on them. But that would be a tough situation to be in. It's like she's putting on her veil. You come in and say, hey, hate to break it to you. But Clark's been fucking your assistant. 
she's like not my clark and then it turns into this big drama and it's like the friends and family is already there or do you wait until um the person who's marrying them gives you a chance to object that's also dark nothing more shocking than an objection at a wedding i wonder how many times or how often people say i object like i do not like they have a problem with the union how often does that happen seems like a movie moment i'm like are people stopping people from getting married day of in real life or is this more common than people even talk about or how many people have been married and not followed through with the marriage to me there's nothing wrong with being engaged and i mean i meant being engaged and not following through with the wedding I think that it's your life and you need to be sure before you make that choice. And if if it was actually my friend that was getting married and I found out this huge bomb, I would pull them aside and tell them and be like, I need you to know this now, because if you don't know this now, you could this the rest of your life could be ruined. You know, it's better find out before the wedding than it is after the wedding. You can't text them on the honeymoon and be like, by the way, Clark's been porking the neighbor. It's like, what? You bitch, why didn't you tell me this before? I didn't want to ruin your wedding. Well, my wedding's already ruined because my marriage is already over. You know? Weddings, they're a lot. They're a lot. It's like, okay, we have to rent out a banquet hall. Nothing makes me more uncomfortable than a sterile-ass banquet hall with people's family members in it. It's like, okay. (sighs) Let's see what else there is. We did this one. We did the AI kill switch. We hit all of these. Here we go. When Monica Lewinsky, when the Monica Lewinsky scandal broke, President Clinton famously said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Turns out he was lying. No shit. Did the fact that Bill Clinton lied about about this make you think he is capable of lying about other things that are more important to the national interest? Don't all politicians lie? Correct me if I'm wrong, but all politicians are full of shit. So, I don't know. I mean, what a president... I don't really care who sucks a president and stick as long as they can show up for the country. If you're getting your dick sucked and you're showing up for the country, I don't care. If you're getting your dick sucked and you're not showing up for the country, I care. Do you know what I mean? It's like... I don't care where the president puts his or her dick because his or her dick, his or her dick or vagina, because at the end of the day, presidents need to come too. do you know what I mean? Like, oh, maybe the president is in a better mood after he or she comes and that's better for the country. You know, maybe if Bill Clinton didn't get a blowjob for Monica Lewinsky, he would have done something else way worse, like nuke somebody. Sometimes you need to come. Presidents need to come. They're just like you and I. They want to come. Was I planning on getting into this? Absolutely not. Like, absolutely not. Um, we covered that one. We covered this one. Uh, we covered all of these deep cards. Let me see if there's anything else that I wrote down in my notes. Um somebody asked for dating advice i said just be yourself there's nothing better than being yourself and be honest about who you are because they're gonna find out one way or another who you are you know you can't lie for forever if you're bisexual tell them you're bisexual if you're muslim tell them you're muslim if you're a satanist Is that what they're called? Satanists? If you're a Satanist, let your lover know. Be like, hey, there's a reason why I have pentagrams on my wall. I worship the devil. Do you still want to be with me? Maybe you guys can worship the devil together. Or maybe you guys um, can agree to disagree on your religious affiliations and it's not a big deal. But I think the more authentic you are from the beginning, the better it is for everybody. Okay. Somebody asked me... If I could travel back in time and then leave a, uh, a modern invention in the previous time, what would I travel with and what would I leave behind? So 
I would say I would travel to the 1950s, but I would bring Pornhub with me because I'd like to see everyone's reaction to hentai porn and uh, cream pie videos. That's just me. I feel like it would be funny. They'd be like, gee whiz, I wasn't prepared for this. You know, like that could really stir things up in the 1950s. Pornhub on a computer in the 1950s is like the wife pulls out a pie. Her husband's looking at a cream pie. What's happening? Where is this podcast going? I don't know. But this was such a fun solo episode of Shank. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next week on another episode of Shank. Next week we will have a guest. And thank you guys so much for listening to and subscribing to this podcast. Um, We'll see you next week. Also, make sure to go watch uh, the latest episode of This Bitch Podcast and subscribe to my Patreon. And if you're in L.A., a reminder, I will be at the Comedy Store Saturday, 8.30 p.m. Hope to see you guys there. And thank you for listening to this pod and being a certified shankster. Bye.